What's up, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode, and good morning. Have I told you it's morning here? It's actually actually Sunday morning. Everybody's still in, in their beds, and I'm just sitting here at my screen, thinking about life, talking to my imaginary friends, and that's okay, you know? You gotta, you gotta sacrifice for the team every now and then. I was gonna say welcome back to another episode of Shiny Forehead Productions, but as you can see, we got the new setup, uh, a new setup again. Probably have a new setup again next week. But I'm still, still um, testing multiple angles. The thing is, when you get to a certain age, I'm uh, 36 now. There are no good angles left. You know, there used to be a time, say, um, eight years ago, where you could just stand in in front of a camera and go like, you know. Just, just take the damn photo. It doesn't matter. I know I'm going to look at least half decent. Not great, but good. Good enough. And then you uh, fast forward, you know, time passes by and you start looking at, um, at yourself and realize, okay, I've turned into a, uh, into a woman, actually. No offense to, to women, of course, but you get to a point where you're like, okay, there, I, I see the whole thing about good and bad angles. Um, and then there's just a, a point in time where there's no good angles left. And, um, I am afraid the next 10 years will determine if your face will start looking like an old shriveled nutsack or uh, if people go, Oh, you're 55. You look pretty damn good for your, for your age. You must be into, uh, biohacking and you must, uh, take ice baths every morning at 4am. Anyway, you're not here for this, for this nonsense. Before we, uh, before we dive into uh, the other charts, the uh, indices and uh, other charts that are uh, less exciting to me personally, because they're just trending up, we're going to do a little deep dive into Bitcoin. And when I say deep dive, that sounds like I'm going to be analyzing Bitcoin for 45 minutes. That's not going to be the case, but we're going to look at it a little bit more than we have done for the last two weeks. Uh, but before we do so, there's a, um, there's a, um, a new hype. Going. It's not a new hype. It's, it's been, it's been the, uh, the, uh, the hype for the last year or so. This cycle has been different because there's so much liquidity going into uh, meme coins. And I was asked, yo, well, dude, do you trade, uh, trade meme coins? First of all, when people say trade meme coins, I get a little, a little icky because it's, again, you almost get into a, uh, an ethical debate about what is trading and what is not trading. In general, I believe trading is what you do, something you do according to a, a plan, according to a system, you take calculated or measured risks. If you're just throwing money at a wall and hoping something sticks uh to me personally that is not trading if you want to call it trading i'm not here to debate semantics but let's just for the sake of argument call it trading so do i trade meme coins um i do not i have tried i'm just i'm just literally the least lucky guy on the fucking planet i mean there's people just throwing a bunch of solana or ethereum uh, at different coins, and they do a, a, th a 10,000 multiplier overnight. They wake up multimillionaires. Do note, by the way, and this, is, this isn't this is really relevant, but it's, it's, it's something you should always be aware of. I prefer spending my time, if I have to choose between social media platforms, I choose uh, X or Twitter. I don't even know if anybody calls it X, but uh, X, I guess. No, I'm not going to be the first guy to start calling it X. Uh, I use I use Twitter. I prefer Twitter over things like Hamastagram. I mean Instagram. Uh, slip of the tongue. And um, you're gonna see a lot of screenshots from people who have bought a uh, a random meme coin that has done again uh, a multiplier of ten thousand, and they have like twenty eight million to sell. Always check the liquidity of that specific market. I mean, it's pretty nice to see an unrealized profit of millions of dollars, but if the liquidity of the token is only like $40,000, how the fuck are you going to sell $28 million of coins? You, you just can't. You can't, you can't do it. Um, and a lot of these guys, the, the, the coins they hold or the, the 
the so-called value of their portfolio, of their coin, of their holding, exceeds the total liquidity of the of the specific market by a lot. Uh, so that that doesn't mean it's not impressive. It doesn't mean uh, you know more power to them, but they can sell their entire position. So it's just unrealized profit that will always remain uh, unrealized profit in in a lot of cases. I'm and I'm not talking about single cases. This is this is the case in a lot of uh, a lot of times. Um, also remember sur survivorship bias. It, it seems like a lot of people don't know what survi survivorship bias is. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with too many details, but um, it basically means that you you don't you you don't look at the entire body of data that you should be looking at to jump to uh, to uh, jump to a decent conclusion. Meaning you just look at the traders or the meme coin buyers the shitcoin slingers who have survived and think, holy shit, this, 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 this thing is a gold mine. I got to jump into this, uh, neglecting or ignoring either consciously or, or unconsciously the th tens of thousands of, of people who have tried, but have, uh, have failed miserably. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at, at, at Bitcoin. Um, a couple of, really important things, uh, really important to me personally. What happens when you look at a chart like this? Again, if you if you spend any time on Twitter, and I mean, that place is fucking unhinged, but it's it's fun. It, it can be a lot of fun. And it's pretty good to get a feel of, of the pulse of the market, what people are thinking, what people are buying, what people are saying. And in general, when you get a range like this, if you get to the top of the range, people on social media are going to be screaming, holy fuck, guys, we're going to go to $100,000. We're all going to be loaded. Um, let's fucking do this shit. Then we pull back and we always pull back and we get to the bottom of the range and people are going to be like, oh, my God, this fucking sucks. I've lost all my money. My wife's going to divorce me. What the hell am I going to do? Uh, we're surely going to go to $30,000, but then we're going to go up and you guessed it. People are going to go, oh my God, this is going to be the breakout. This is the, the second time we're revisiting, revisiting this high. We're definitely going to go to $8 million per Bitcoin. And then we pull back and people are going to be like, oh my God, why the fuck did I not sell? I was, I was almost break even, you know, God damn, I bought the literal top. Holy shit. How can I, can I be so retarded? Um, I will sell next time around. If, if we, if we go back to the range high, I will be selling my entire Bitcoin stack. But until then, I'm sure we're going to go to $25,000. We're going to go back up and the same thing just repeats over and over and over and over again. And it's pretty funny. I mean, it's pretty funny, but you got to be aware of why this happens. And, and, and I want to be cautious, um, with saying things like the market is designed to, or the market is made to, um, again, semantics, but the market isn't made or created to do jack shit. I think most things, most movements are random and we may, or we stand to make the most money in small, during small periods of time where, uh, movements aren't random. Uh, however, you do see that you are kind of always inclined to be bullish at the range top and always be bearish at the range bottom. And the, the, the reason for that is, is obviously pretty simple. I mean, if we're at the range top, you stand to make a lot of money. So you get a, uh, a sense of hope, um, hoping the, the um, resistance will break, hoping we'll start trending up, hoping we'll get to new highs. That creates hope, and hope is a very, very powerful emotion. At the bottom, we have fear, but not only fear, there's also this sense of preparing for the worst to, to, um, to convince yourself that you're ready for the worst. It's like people who are always going to be thinking about, okay, what's going to be the worst case scenario, and I'm just going to be thinking about the worst case scenario. And then when it does happen, I'm going to be emotionally ready for it. That's not actually how human beings work, but you know, more power to you. Just keep doing what you do. Um, 
So yeah, if if we're at the range lows and you're going to be mentally preparing for a nuke to twenty five thousand dollars, you're going to be like, you you see, guys, I told you guys, I posted this on twit on Twitter. Uh, I was the one uh, who said that, uh, and now I'm going to be the one buying the buying the dip. So it's it's basically an an emotional roller coaster. And now we're sorry, I just burped. And now we're back at the range high. People are obviously bullish again. Uh, so this is what the range high is supposed to do. However, however, there is a big difference between the range high here and the range high here. The simple fact is that market structure has broken. Uh, I think market structure has broken. We got the highs, we got the lows, we got the lower highs, we got the lower lows, we got the lower highs, we got the lower lows, we got the lower highs. And then we get this low here. This low isn't a lower low. You, uh, you could say it's an it's an equal low. This does not mean a break in market structure. Even if this were a higher low, that still does not mean it is a a break of market structure. To for market structure to actually uh, be broken, you're gonna have to see a uh, a confirmation. So both a a higher low and a higher high. Now when this high is put in, this is clearly a higher high compared to this high here. Uh, your question is, could be, okay, look, but why, why is this the higher high? Why, do you, why don't you just ignore this high here? You could, you could say and come in and say, look, you got this low, uh, this high here, then you got the, um, the lower low, and then you got this high here, which is lower than this high. So you have another lower high, but um, you could say that. I mean, it, it is a discretionary way of looking at at, at charts uh, opinions that will differ uh, but to me a high is put in because simply there's a lot of price movements up to this point and then a lot of price movement back away from it so this clearly to me is a is a swing high at the higher high and then we got the higher low uh, so this is a break in market structure also there is quite a lot of consolidation consolidating consolidation going on around the range high uh, we got close to the range high here and then only slightly pulled back we didn't really pull back all the way back to the range lows not even close to the range lows which is also which is also a a, a change to uh, be aware of i never almost never look at the monthly but if you do decide to look at the monthly, which you can and, and should sometimes, you'll see Bitcoin did not have a correction at all. I mean, this isn't this isn't a correction. Um, so you could simply say, look, look at the monthly. We're just consolidating uh, pretty close to all time highs. And that is also very bullish. That is that is also very, uh, very bullish. Um, I have er, I have said in previous episodes that I don't consider this a bull flag. This is a, a megaphone pattern or a reverse triangle. Uh, on the monthly, you could you could call this a a bull flag more so than the uh, than on the weekly, and it also depends on if you chart wicks or if you only chart candle bodies. Uh, I chart wicks and not candle bodies, but if you only chart candle bodies, this this could pretty much look like a a bull flag. So that's really bullish. Um, next, or uh, again, I don't trade fundamentals. I don't. I don't. But in general, almost always, uh, election years are going to be bullish for risk assets. Almost always, not always, but almost always. And it's in uh, it's an extra advantage, I suppose you could say, if a previous candidate gets reelected. In this case, Donald Trump. I'm not here to debate politics. I think both are pretty unhinged. Both are, you know, the idea that either of them could become a leader of the free world is pretty bizarre. But, you know, who cares? We just care about Bitcoin prices, right? So uh, if Trump gets reelected, investors are going to know or think they know, or at least know better, what will happen to the economy. Uh, compared to uh, uh, Harris, and uh, nobody really knows what Trump's policies are because he never actually uh, answers those questions. He'll just say, "Look, yeah, I have an idea, or we have a plan, or we have uh, a half a plan." 
but it's going to be more predictable than a uh, than what a what what would happen with a new a new president, and the odds that Trump uh, will be victorious are 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 big are significant. So I think the um, the rest of the year and 2025 could be really bullish for risk assets. However, again, pretty pretty important. It doesn't matter how bullish you are here. It doesn't matter if I have one or 25 reasons why Bitcoin could break out here. I am still speculating that it could break out or will break out instead of waiting for uh, confirmation. And the reason I prefer waiting for confirmation is because, well, I just, that, that, is, that is literally the answer. Um, it has given you confirmation. So you actually know we have broken out. And I posted on Twitter, uh, I think yesterday, you know, you can make a whole song and dance about it. You can, you can go like, hey, you know, I'm just going to break out because of this and that reason. We're still looking at a diagonal trend line, a diagonal pattern. And diagonal patterns are significantly and statistically less reliable than horizontal levels are. And in this case, you still have pretty significant horizontal levels. Uh, you've got the double top here, which is, uh, which is significant, around uh, 72.2. We got, obviously, the all-time high at uh, 74. Uh, so those are important levels to, to cross. Um, I would personally want to see a weekly close above the highest close we've ever had. Uh, so not the all-time high, so not the wick, but the highest close, which is going to be uh, 71.4, say. That is going to be a, uh, an important close to me and one I'm going to be, uh, to be watching to make it easier for yourself. You could use this, this. It's not really a double top because there's not enough time in between the tops to me personally, but you could call this a double top and... Um, and, and, and therefore call it the most significant level of, of, all, these, uh, of all these levels. Uh, so anywhere between uh, 71.4 and, and 72 is going to be a, uh, a very important close to me. Um, let me check a, a few of my uh, notes. Um, again, I've said so last week. In between here, I'm not really trading. Trading Bitcoin, uh, getting chopped up is, is to me, the equivalent of uh, a death by a thousand cuts. It's just, it's exhausting. Um, it's not my thing. That's why I'm just going, going to wait for, a, um, for a, uh, a confirmed breakout. But it's looking bullish. It's, it's, really looking, it's really looking good. I was going to bid this level here. Didn't get the pullback yet. We may still do. Uh, not sure if I'll be bidding it uh, this time around. A lot of time has passed, uh, but we'll see. We'll see see how price develops. But it's looking it's looking good. I don't look at any other indicators uh, as I've I've said before. I don't look at RSI. Uh, RSI is a derivative of price. Uh, okay, my light just went off. Hold on a second. Let me turn this light back on. Uh, RSI is a der derivative of price, so I just look at price instead of indicators that are based on price. 252 week moving average, still uh, way down below. It's 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 just looking um, it's just looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. We have broken out out of the out of the megaphone. For fuck's sake, my light just went off again. I'm gonna try to turn it on once more, and if it goes off again then um, we're just going to keep on going without the light. There has been a daily close out of the, out of the megaphone. Uh, it's not really convincing close. So even if you do trade, even if you do decide to trade uh, this breakout, it's not convincing. So be, be wary of that. Uh, there's, there's obviously uh, advantages and disadvantages of, of trading um, um, the the idea of a potential breakout versus the actual breakout trading the potential breakout is obviously going to give you a better entry if it does eventually break out 
However, your risk is going to be uh, larger because you don't know if it's uh, broken out. Uh, so you could be stopped out a bunch of times. You know, you could have, if you've done, if you've done it here, if you've done it here, 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 there's one, two, three, four, maybe five, maybe six potential um, trades where you would have been stopped out. Whereas I have not been stopped out yet at all. Um, of course, you could say, yeah, yeah, well, look, this, this is hindsight bias uh, because you do actually have six different examples to give us. If it would have broken out the first time around, I would would have been in the trade, and you would have not been, uh, which is true, which is uh, which is absolutely true. But I do still wait for a uh, for a confirmed breakout. Um, yeah, so bull traps and and bear traps are a a, a real thing, and they're they're tricky. I don't have a, I never have a, a tinfoil hat on. I'm not a, um, a conspiracy theorist. Absolutely not a conspiracy nut, even if you will. Uh, I'm not. But things like bull traps and bear traps are obviously a, a real thing. That has nothing to do with mysterious market forces trying to move your hand. I mean, it's, it's a real thing. Um, and that is what why risk management is uh, is everything and i do prefer uh, uh trading uh, confirmed breakout breakouts uh, as part of my risk management strategy i don't think you could ever really start to make money in financial markets before you know uh how to actually manage your risk and lose uh stop stop losing money St yeah i think stopping Stopping to lose money is the first step to actually making money in uh, in markets. But back to the to the bull trap. If you want to sell, if you want, if you're a big seller, you need a lot of buyers, and that is why bull traps work. If 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 you're a big holder of, of Bitcoin, if you're an uh, an institution, uh, if you're just a a will and you want to sell your stack or part of your stack. If you hold enough, again, you're going to need a lot of sellers, uh, a lot of buyers, sorry. And a lot of buyers do tend to step in um, at places like these, at potential breakouts. People get hopeful, people get bullish, people get, you know, ideas into their heads. They're going to start buying. So this is a very, very good position for big sellers to step in and sell. It is only after, uh, after, the amount of buying exceeds the amount of sellers that we will continue to go up. Uh, I don't need to tell you that, but that is that is the basic of how markets uh, uh, move. If this does break out, alts could could catch a bid, and that is uh, that is nice. Um, alt markets have been a little frothy, and that they they're not looking uh, great. And uh, every slight pullback, Bitcoin does or gives. Um, Alts tend to to nuke harder, as you all uh, know. Um, so even though some of them look good, and I all right, before we dive into the charts, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you trade on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dex Tools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be? to just set limit orders for any token so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market. Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where Exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots and let me just tell you, exception stands out i wouldn't partner with them if i did not believe they were the best in the game plus they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot this bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient which is exactly what you need in fast moving markets like these check them out using the link in the description below I'm, I'm in uh, quite a few trades, or well, quite a few, I mean like four trades, but uh, just just be aware of the fact that Bitcoin is at range high. 
Um, and what also happens, what could happen, it, it does happen uh, sometimes, is that when Bitcoin actually starts running, it does tend to pull the liquidity out of a lot of altcoins. Um, people do flock to Bitcoin. People do flock to the to the fastest fastest horse, um, and therefore uh, leave behind their alts for the for the future. Once um, Bitcoin starts consolidating, that is why alts usually run uh, the hardest when Bitcoin consolidates. Anyway, yeah, let's look at a few um, a few alts. Um, I'm in this uh, VU trade. I think I posted about this uh, last week as well. Let me clear this shit up because it looks absolutely horrendous. Uh, what else? This is... Um, okay, let's leave it like this for now. <clears throat> this is actually pretty good. This, is, this could be good advice. If you trade the daily or the weekly first... Um, and by that, I mean, if you look at the daily or the weekly first to get an idea of where the market is, and I do recommend that you do, I mean, you could, of course, start with the five minute chart, but that is, uh, ridiculous unless you trade the, uh, unless you're a very short term trader, a scalper, but if you want to get an idea of what the, what the general direction of the market is if you want to get uh, a directional bias um the weekly the daily <clears throat> even the monthly are much better there's less clutter there's less noise uh, it just works better however the the uh, the advice i want to i want to give you and which is something you could have just noticed as well is that once you get a feel a, a feel for the direction you're going to get into a trade you're going to you're going to uh, mark your levels. Uh, you're going to do your chart and everything, and it's going to be done. And you go to the hourly or the four hourly. Uh, again, depends on what you trade. You start putting in levels there. Uh, if you use a trailing stop, which I do, uh, it's going to it's going to add extra icons. If you uh, want to add to your trade uh, at specific levels, which I do, I want to add to this trade here. You're going to have like a million fucking lines on your screen, which sucks. Um, and you're going to miss the forest. Fuck, what's the, what's the expression again? You're going, to, you're going to miss the forest for the, for the trees? I think that's it. I think that's it, yeah. Anyway, the point is that you're going to, you're going to start cluttering up everything and you're going to miss your, uh, your, your, your general overview. It's good to step back every now and then. Look at the daily again and think, all right, if I wasn't in this trade right now, would I want to be in or would I want to get in? And if the answer is no, if you're going to be like, ah, I don't know, I haven't looked at the daily for quite a few days or even a week. Uh, looking at it now, it doesn't look too great. Just get out. Just really just that's what I do. Get out. Even if the trade is um, is uh, green. Uh, is in profit, I will still uh, get out, especially if a bearish bias has um, evolved over, over time. Anyway, I got into this trade because uh, we got this candle here. We got all the lows here. We got the range kind of going on, at least uh, some sort of structure for, uh, for uh, uh, 10 days. And then we get this candle here. To me, this is significant because this is the thrust candle that closes through all these highs here what i want to be doing is i want to be long the last high pre breakout which is this or this you could come in at both what i'll do is i'll, I'll mark both um like so and i'll know that those are the last highs pre break on the daily then i'll look at okay what does the hourly look like if i were uh, if I were going to be long those levels, we'd have this one. This is a, a significant swing high, uh, which I would bid. But then we also have these highs here on the hourly, which to me are also significant. I think I've explained this last week, but I'll explain it again. Uh, I will usually take 100% position. Again, 100% meaning that if I have 100% position on, I stand to lose 100% of what I want to lose per trade 
Um, but if there's a swing high close to a last high pre breakout, I will bid both levels. I will bid both levels and take a 50% position at both of them, uh, which I have done in this case. My stop was below this thrust candle here. My stop is always below a thrust candle. As you can see, both orders were filled. I was not stopped down. Uh, I was almost at a point of uh, manually closing this trade. I did not. Um, so yeah, we got the this little structure here. Then we got this thrust candle up here. Put my stop below this one, and um, yeah, now I wanna I wanna add to the trade at this level here because this is a thrust that closes through these highs here, uh, which is a good place to add. The only thing why I don't like to add around this level is because of the slow drift of death into the level. I think I've said the exact same thing last week. I hate this kind of price action. Uh, but again, it's the weekend and this price, this price, this kind of price action during the weekend is different than this kind of price action during the week. That is why I will still leave the order in for now. Uh, were this uh, happening during the week, I would have pulled the order 100%, would have left, left the stop in. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's wait and see what happens. If we do close through this high here, uh, these highs here, uh, the 19.5 level, I'll definitely look to uh, add maybe quite a lot to the trade to trade it up to the swing high of 22 cents. Now we got Solana. Solana is actually uh, the trade we discussed last week, which is looking good. If if anyone's taken this, um, as I said last week, this high here is significant because it's a um, a um, support resistance flip level. It's a key level to me. Uh, if we do break out of it, if we do break through this high, I would be looking at bidding, not the actual level. I don't bid uh, the uh, the actual level, the retest of the level. I bid the last high pre-break, uh, which would have been this. And as you can see, it, it was retested really nicely. Uh, yes, this, this does actually closed through the high here. Uh, not by a lot, but as you can see, it did. And if you want, I can zoom in for the blind homies. There you go. It, it, it did close through. Uh, wasn't convincing, but um, yeah, it would have, would have been a very, very nice trade. Uh, you could have traded this back to the equal highs here. And um, uh, could have, could leave or have left a position running to, uh, as I've mentioned last week, to uh, the the range high of this triangle here. So yeah, that would would have, would have been a uh, a nice trade. I'm also in uh, Litecoin. <clears throat> Posted about this on Twitter uh, a few times. We got the ascending triangle here. We got the horizontal resistance tested quite a few times. Then we have this level, the 70 level, which is uh, about 3%, I think, higher than the, uh, than the resistance level to uh, confirm the breakout. We get the breakout confirmation here. However, went back all the way. I was, was uh, stopped out at the lows here. Then we get the new breakout, and I've, uh, I went long uh, again. I bought Litecoin, and so far it's looking, it's looking good. Uh, if it does, uh, if it does stub me out, if it does turn into a uh, fake breakout again, then well, actually, it's, it's not a. If it doesn't reach target, it doesn't mean it's a it's a fake out or a fake breakout. This is still a confirmed breakout. But if it, if it just stops me out, I will not be uh, I will not be buying uh, the the breakout again. I always try the same trade at least uh, or uh, at best two times, and that is uh, that is it. Then I'll just move on to uh, something else. ENA, I like this structure a lot. It's a uh, it's an inverse head and shoulders at the bottom of the chart. So this is a very very strong and reliable uh, bottoming pattern. I uh, I longed, I bought the confirmed breakout. We have trended or traded back. Um, still looks good. Uh, no complaints, no worries. Of course, if you look at the hourly, I mean it it you know it could depress you, but um with with 
with structures like this, bottoming structures like this, I will just keep an eye on the uh, on the daily. And to me, this looks uh, this looks good. Then we got Monero, fucking Dino coins, man, Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, I'm long this coin as well, simply because we have all the resistance here. Then we get this candle here, which closed through the through the highs. Uh, to me, this was a confirmed breakout, uh, which I really like. We got to clear this level. This is the this is the the only uh, level that holds us back from reaching target. To me personally, this is what I think. You could of course say, well, what about this low? What about these lows? What about you know? This could be the last low pre breakdown uh, when Mark uh, when market started uh, trending down. So this could also be a potential low uh, potential resistance. You could say, look, we got the Fibonacci, uh, which coincidentally is also the last um, form of uh, Fibonacci resistance. So if it clears this, I think we will go to target, which is 182, 180, 182, almost surely. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, see what happens with that. Indices are still looking good. Look at the look at the DAX. I mean, we're just making all time highs. FTSE not doing jack shit still. Uh, Nasdaq also starting to look nice. We got the shooting star here, but at the at a position which is uh, which is not significant to me, not not important. Um, it's 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 looking uh, it's looking good. We may be seeing new highs again. So indices are strong. Uh, which is good russell 2000 back at the resistance of the of the channel if it breaks out of the channel uh, not only out of the channel but also clears this resistance here the, hor the horizontal resistance i will be uh, i will be, be buying russell for uh, for new highs uh, i'm still long dow jones looking great uh, s p looking great i mean again none of this is bearish apple looking good waiting for a confirmed breakout at 237 to uh, buy apple to new highs amazon boring meta still long still long meta uh but i may cut this because we got the uh, swing high here we got the low of the day uh, and then we started closing through those lows uh which i don't like which i don't like so i may be closing this uh, uh come monday microsoft microsoft is the only thing that looks like shit on the um uh, on a higher time frame this could be a uh, head and shoulder topping formation topping pattern if it does that's going to drag down the smp with it as well uh, so let's just hope this pattern gets invalidated, which it can do, of course. Uh, still long NVIDIA, uh, looking good, looking good, looking to target uh, still 167. Tesla, uh, I was stopped out of Tesla. I bought Tesla two weeks ago, week and a half ago, stopped out, stopped out at 232. Uh, waiting for it to break out of this triangle again. Um, what I've said last week, the more it goes into the apex of the triangle, the less reliable a pattern like this becomes. So um, that is why I've marked 271, waiting for it to clear 271 to get involved in this market again. Let me see, guys. Let me see if there's anything else that could be of interest. Uh, I think there was a question as well. Mm. There was a question. Oh no, fuck yeah. The, the question was, uh, why speculate that Bitcoin is set to break out this time? Uh, so that was literally the entire premise of this, uh, of this video. Um, I think that, that answered the question pretty, pretty well. Uh, let me look at ether ether is is looking to retest the uh the very important level of 2800 if we finally break out of this 2800 this this uh chart is gonna start to look a lot better uh, i do want to buy ether 
uh, around these levels. This is not relevant anymore, uh, but this level is uh, is still um, interesting to me. Uh, well, it was last week. Probably pull the order. Um, reason for that is if we do go back into this price, uh, I could see this or this turn into uh, resistance. Uh, especially on ETH, especially on an asset that has been performing less uh, good than uh, many other coins. So uh, there's no real reason to take a lot of risk here, or unnecessary risk, until it breaks 2800. Um, but again, you know, there, that's just me. There's people who uh, buy range lows. There's people who buy uh, range highs. There's people who buy mid-range. There's a thousand different ways to do this. Um, and you're just going to have to wait and see and try and test out what works for you, what suits your personality, what suits your risk appetite. Um, oh, I got... <laughs> man. Um, I was also asked not only if I trade meme coins. Oh, yeah, shit, I'm long silver as well, by the way. The reason I'm confused sometimes is because this this watch list is specifically made for the stream um and uh, yeah that is why um uh, the rest is is organized better than this uh, this watch list i am long silver i mean do i have to explain to you why i don't think so look at this look at this freaking chart man uh, i got long at the hourly close above the high um uh, no, sorry, my bad. The four-hour close. So I got long around here somewhere. Uh, I will be buying a retest as well, and then we'll just uh, take this to uh, to new highs around thirty-seven point five, uh, which are these highs here. Uh, so yeah, the the other question was if I trade any low cap. Uh, coins so not just meme coins but also low cap altcoins i don't want to plug any altcoins i don't want to be the guy who sits here and and, and shills you two million dollar coins um so i'm not sure if i should but um these are these are okay these are these are not vaporware in my eyes and i have been accumulating them for almost a year and they are e5 and a sturdy um let me just uh before i open the chart here we go we got this efi and uh sturdy uh they've been uh, doing uh, well for the last uh, few weeks and um uh, yeah these are coins i uh i have significant positions in uh look at this fucking chart my god yeah this has done a uh a times uh 10 10x over uh, the last five weeks weeks or so. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty low market cap, so do be aware of the risks. I'm not telling you to buy these, uh, not at all. This is just a, uh, a question that was asked. Uh, I'm not gonna shill or, or, or name the other coins because they're just too low cap or they're too much uh, vaporware. But I think these will do very, very good in the... Um, in the near future and that is of course also inspired by the hope i have in these coins and the fact that i don't want to get completely annihilated on them uh yeah that that is that is it guys that is it that is it for this week uh really appreciate you tuning in once again i would greatly appreciate a like a subscribe a comment everything works i mean you're you're all on social media all the time you know how good the algorithms work. Uh, we got to feed them. We got to feed the algos. Uh, and I need your help for that. So again, even if you think, ah, oh, you know, what's what's one like going to do? What's my comment going to do? What's my subscription uh, going to do? Uh, they do a lot. They do a lot and they do mean a lot. So um, uh, it's very much appreciated. And I'm hoping to see you all back here next week. Have a uh, great Sunday and uh, have a good trading week ahead. See ya.